So far uh, we have covered uh, three topics in this course and all the three topics were on uh, surface entity methods. So today I am going to start a new topic uh, which will be uh, on bulk entity and the topic uh, that I have chosen for this uh, will be on ultrasonic testing. So this is uh, a technique which can be used for doing uh, entity into the bulk of the material if uh, there is any flaw or defect which are much below the surface. Ultrasonic technique is one method uh, which can be used for inspecting this kind of defects which lie into the bulk of the material. And this technique uh, can also be used uh, for doing surface entity. So, it can be used for both. That is why ultrasonic testing is one of the most versatile entity method and from uh, today onwards in next few classes we will be uh, discussing about uh, this particular technique. So, since uh, this technique as the name suggests uh, based on ultrasonic waves. So, let us first see uh, what ultrasonic uh, waves are and what their properties are and then we are going to see how uh, these waves are used for doing NDT. Okay. So, let us first learn little bit about ultrasonic waves. Ultrasonic waves are nothing but uh, sound waves which have uh, frequency greater than 20 kilohertz. Okay. So, anything below uh, 20 kilohertz uh, would be in the audible range. When you go uh, to a frequency beyond 20 kilohertz, then uh, the sound waves are in the ultrasonic range. Okay. So, this is what ultrasonic uh, waves are and if you see their nature and properties, for example, if you see the wavelength, it is uh, in the range of uh, 1 to 10 millimeter. Frequency is 0.1 to 15 megahertz, but uh, generally uh, for doing ultrasonic testing a frequency uh, within 10 megahertz is used. So, uh, 20, uh, 20 kilohertz and above up to 10 megahertz is used uh, for uh, ultrasonic testing for doing NDT. And this wavelength lambda uh, is a factor of uh, the velocity of these waves and the frequency in this fashion. Okay. And then they travel at different speed in different medium. And in most of the metals, uh, the velocity change uh, with uh, frequency is not very significant. So, these are some of the typical uh, characteristics of uh, ultrasonic waves.
okay. And now let us talk about uh, uh, what kind of ultrasonic uh, waves you have, what are the different types of waves. Primarily uh, as far as NDT is concerned, uh, you have uh, two types of uh, waves, uh, one is uh, longitudinal and the other one is uh, transverse. Okay, and let us see why it is called longitudinal and transverse and what is the difference between them. Okay. So, now if you talk about uh, the longitudinal waves, in this case if you see the propagation of the wave uh, through a medium, let us say the wave is moving in this direction. So, this is the wave uh, propagation direction. And when sound moves uh, through a medium, it uh, creates a local pressure, local sound pressure which will uh, push the atoms or the particles and create a lattice wave inside the solid. So, it will create some elastic waves and with the help of these elastic waves, the sound moves from one part to other uh, another part in a medium. Okay. So, there is a movement of the particles or the atoms inside the medium. Okay. So, in this case, uh, the direction of uh, particle movement is parallel to the direction of the movement of the wave. Okay. So, in this case it is uh, moving in this direction. So, the particle movement direction also will be the same. So, this is the direction of particle movement. Okay. So, that means the movement of these particles will be coordinated in the sense that uh, the first atom can push the second one and the second one can push the third one and so on since they are moving in the same direction as the wave. Okay. So, in this case uh, the movement of the particles are coordinated and they can help each other. Uh, in moving when the sound wave is moving through the medium. Okay. On the other hand, if you look at the transverse waves, in this case uh, if this be the direction of wave propagation. The particles will move in a perpendicular direction. Like this. Okay. So, in this case the movement will be like this. Okay, that means, the particles are going up and down and the wave is moving horizontally. Okay. So, in this case as you could realize uh, while the sound is uh, propagating through the medium, in order to create that elastic wave uh, which helps in uh, moving the sound wave the particles have to pull each other okay, and then create this uh, motion 
in the direction of the propagation of the wave and that is how uh, this uh, wave propagates in this case. So, here uh, the movement is not as coordinated or the movement of the particles is not as easy as in the case of uh, longitudinal waves and that is why uh, the velocity of the longitudinal waves is always greater than that of transverse waves. Okay. This is uh, due to uh, the difference in the movement of particles with respect to the direction of wave propagation. Okay. So, in one case in the longitudinal case uh, the direction of wave propagation and particle movement are same and as a result the particles can move uh, easily and in the case of uh, transverse waves since the direction of the particle movement is perpendicular to the movement of the wave propagation. Here the difficulty level for movement of the particle is more compared to the longitudinal waves and that is why the velocity of the longitudinal wave uh, in a particular medium uh, will be more than transverse waves. So, these are the two uh, primary types of uh, ultrasonic waves. Now, when you uh, talk about the velocity, it is uh, related to the elastic constant of the material through which uh, the sound waves are moving and uh, the density of the medium in this fashion. So, C i j is the elastic constant of uh, the material. For example, it could be the Young's modulus or the shear modulus. So, shear modulus uh, can be used for transverse waves and Young's modulus can be used for the longitudinal waves. Sometime uh, Poisson's ratio is also used and rho is the density. Okay, so, the, the properties of the material will decide what will be the velocity of sound uh, through that particular material. Now, there are uh, certain other types of uh, ultrasonic uh, waves also since we are talking about different types of waves let us talk about those also. For example, uh, in uh, uh, surfaces or interfaces You could have uh, various types of uh, particle movement and that would uh, give rise to other type of uh, ultrasonic waves. For example, you could have elliptical or other complex uh, kind of paths in the movement of the particles as the sound uh, moves through the medium. So, this kind of uh, elliptical or other complex uh, vibration which are generated on the surface are known as surface or Rayleigh waves.
which are generated in relatively thick samples. Okay, so, let us say if uh, the sound is moving in this direction. So, you can have a particle movement path like this uh, like in an elliptical path as I said. So, this will be the movement of the particles and through this kind of movement you will uh, generate a motion for the waves in the horizontal direction. Okay. So, this kind of uh, waves uh, which are generated at uh, surfaces or interfaces in uh, thick materials, they are known as surface or Rayleigh waves. Okay. And in uh, thin plates, uh, you could have uh, some other type of uh, waves. Uh, being generated. Which are known as plate waves. And this can be further divided into two categories. One is uh, known as lamb and the other one is known as love. Okay. So, lamb uh, is the component of the vibration which is uh, perpendicular to the surface. And love is uh, parallel to the plane layer and perpendicular to the direction of the waves. Okay, so, these are uh, two different types of uh, plate waves uh, that uh, you can find on thin plates. One is lamb and another is love. Okay. And in, in the lamb waves, you can have a symmetric lamb uh, like this. symmetric lamb or these are also known as ex extensional waves. And you could also have uh, asymmetric like this.
and this is in flexural mode. Okay, so, these are uh, different types of uh, ultrasonic waves. Our primary concern for uh, ultrasonic testing for NDT would be uh, the longitudinal and uh, the transverse waves. So, we will talk about uh, more about them only uh, when we talk about uh, ultrasonic testing as a NDT method. Now, let me tell you how these ultrasonic waves are used for doing NDT. The basic principle behind this is fairly simple. We all know about uh, reflection of sound waves or the echo of sound. Like for example, uh, if you talk loudly in an empty room, uh, the walls will reflect the sound and you will get an echo. Okay? So, while doing ultrasonic testing, uh, what is done is this ultrasonic waves are sent into the sample and uh, when these uh, waves are reflected back, uh, they are collected uh, by a transducer, which is uh, finally will generate the signal if there is any defect. Okay? So, this uh, defect will also act as a reflector, which can reflect the sound waves. Okay? But in that case, uh, the reflection interface is much smaller compared to a wall. So, that means the energy uh, which is there in the reflected waves should be enough uh, for the transducer or the instrument to collect the signal back. Okay? Okay, so, the energy uh, in the transmitted uh, sound waves will depend on uh, the sound pressure which is uh, created by this uh, traveling waves. Okay? You might know that uh, sound waves uh, travel uh, through a medium by oscillatory movement of the atoms or the particles and this movement is due to the local pressure which is created by sound. So, this pressure is the excess pressure uh, above the atmospheric pressure. Okay? So, when uh, sound waves uh, travel through a medium, uh, this local pressure uh, provides some movement to the atoms and due to the bonding uh, between the atoms, it creates uh, an oscillatory movement which in turn will create a wave. Okay? So, that is how the sound waves uh, propagate uh, through a particular medium. Okay? So, let us say uh, this local pressure uh, which is created uh, by the sound is P and let us say it uh, provides a velocity uh, to the particles or the atoms which is Q. Okay? because as I told uh, this will provide some movement to the particles of the atom. So, let us say the velocity of that movement is q. So, p will be uh, proportional to q. Okay? Higher the p, higher will be the movement uh, between the atoms. Now, if you uh, introduce this uh, proportionality constant, then you can write it in this fashion and this parameter z which is P by Q, this is known as acoustic impedance. So, this is nothing but the total resistance to the movement of uh, sound waves uh, through a particular medium. Okay? And the uh, energy of the transmitted beam The energy in the transmitted uh, waves E is again dependent on the pressure P in this manner. Where in rho is the density of the medium.
and V is the velocity of uh, sound waves through the medium. Okay, so, you have you should have enough energy first of all uh, in the uh, transmitted uh, sound waves which uh, go to the sample and then when it is reflected back uh, that reflected waves also should have enough energy. So, that the instrument which is used for doing ultrasonic testing should be able to capture it. Okay? And if you want to get an expression for P and Q, if the wave is represented by an equation like this. So, if this be the wave, Okay, so, if, if this be the wave where uh, y naught is the amplitude, T is time omega is the angular uh, frequency which is 2 pi f where f is the frequency and k is known as wave number. which is equal to 2 pi by lambda, lambda is the wave length. Okay? So, if this be the wave, then the uh, velocity uh, which is uh, given to the particles or to the atoms q is this d y d t. So, q will be equal to this. So, this is the effect of uh, sound waves uh, when it uh, travels through a medium, it provides this uh, velocity q and uh, the resistance uh, to the movement of sound wave is provided is given by that uh, parameter acoustic impedance. Okay? So, based upon this uh, transmitted beam energy, it will enter a particular sample or a particular medium and then when it encounters an interface, uh, a part of this sound beam will be reflected back. Okay? And the energy of that uh, reflected beam that will depend on this particular parameter acoustic impedance as to what is the change of impedance across that reflecting interface. Okay? So, that is what will decide the energy in the reflected beam and as I said, if the energy is enough in this echo or in this reflected beam then you can use an instrument, a transducer to capture that energy and convert that into a signal which can be shown in the display of the system. And that is how you will get to know about uh, presence of defects if that reflecting interface be a defect. Okay? So, that is how uh, the basic principle is uh, behind this particular technique. It is a fairly simple one, it is based upon the reflection of sound waves. Uh, from a discontinuity which provides a, a reflecting interface to the sound waves which are propagating through the sample. Okay? Yeah, so, uh, with that uh, today I am going to stop here and in the next class we are going to see how these ultrasonic waves are used to do uh, non-destructive testing and rest of the things also about this particular method we are going to see in the uh, subsequent classes. So, for today I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.